this video we're going to be talking about phase changes and why they occur. So first we need to look at vaporization, which is when the liquid turns to a gas. So you can imagine we have a liquid and all the liquid molecules are jiggling around randomly. And then if one molecule happens to get enough energy, it can go flying away from the rest of the molecules and turn into a gas. So this process, vaporization, is endothermic because the, in order for the molecule to escape the liquid, the intermolecular forces in the liquid must be broken. And the heat needed to vaporize a substance is given by its enthalpy of vaporization. So if we have a liquid in a closed container, then some of the liquid molecules will vaporize, and then eventually, as more and more vapor accumulates, that vapor will start to condense, which is, of course, the opposite of vaporization, going from the gas phase to the liquid phase. So this vaporization and condensation will simultaneously occur in this closed container. And eventually, they will reach equilibrium. In other words, the vaporization and condensation occur at the same rates, so it looks like nothing is changing. But actually, molecules are still vaporizing and condensing. They just do it at the same rate. So when this equilibrium is reached, the pressure of that vapor that is present above the liquid is called the vapor pressure. And so the vapor pressure mainly depends on the intermolecular forces in the liquid. If we have stronger intermolecular forces, it's harder for the liquid molecules to escape into the gas phase. So the vapor pressure will be lower there will be less vapor present at this equilibrium state. And vapor pressure also depends on the temperature. Because we know temperature is just a measure of the average kinetic energy. So at higher temperatures, more of the liquid molecules will have the necessary kinetic energy to overcome the IMFs and escape into the gas phase. And so we can get a linear graph by plotting the natural log of the vapor pressure versus 1 over the Kelvin temperature. And the slope of this graph will be the negative enthalpy of vaporization over the universal gas constant. And this C is just a constant that differs for each liquid. So not only liquids can have a vapor pressure, solids can also have a vapor pressure, which means the solid is going directly to the gas phase. Now if we have a solid going directly to gas, that's called sublimation. And the opposite, which is gas to solid, is deposition. So a heating curve shows how a substance changes phases as we keep adding more heat to the substance. So the x-axis of this graph is the heat being added, and the y-axis is the temperature of the substance. So you can see we start out as a solid, and then as we add more heat, the temperature increases until it hits this first plateau. This, pl this plateau represents the substance melting. It's going from a solid to a liquid and the temperature doesn't change while it's melting because all of the extra energy from the heat being added is used to break up the structure of the solid. You know, we have to break some of the intermolecular forces in order to form the liquid state. So the energy needed to melt the substance is called the enthalpy of fusion. So once in the liquid state, we keep adding heat and the temperature increases more until it reaches the second plateau, which is vaporization, going from the liquid to the gas. 
So again, the temperature stays constant because all of the energy being added is used to break apart the intermolecular forces holding the liquid molecules together. And so only after all of those forces are broken can the energy again be used to increase the temperature of the substance, which is now a gas. And so the melting and boiling points of a substance are basically determined by the vapor pressure of the solid and liquid states of that substance. At the melting point, the solid and liquid states have the same vapor pressure, and they can coexist in equilibrium. So let's look at why this happens. So let's say we have a solid and a liquid of the same substance interacting in a container. Now they will both have some vapor above them according to their vapor pressure. Now let's say the vapor pressure of the solid is less than the vapor pressure of the liquid. So the solid wants less vapor above it and the liquid wants a lot more vapor above it. So what happens is the solid will take this vapor and turn it into the solid through deposition in order to have less vapor pressure. Well, the liquid will keep on releasing more vapor because the solid is taking it away. And the liquid, since it has that higher vapor pressure, it wants more vapor present. So the solid will keep stealing the vapor that the liquid produces. And so eventually, all the liquid is gone, and only the solid state remains. So again, if the solid has a lower vapor pressure than the liquid, we must be below the melting point, since only the solid can exist. Now, the opposite of that, if the liquid has a lower vapor pressure than the solid, then the liquid will keep taking in vapor and converting it to liquid while the solid will keep on releasing more vapor in order to try to achieve that vapor pressure. So eventually all the solid will be used up and we'll just have the liquid. So this must be above the melting point of a substance. So at the melting point when these two states have equal vapor pressures, then only then can they coexist in equilibrium. So the boiling point is similar. The boiling point is when the li liquid and gas states are in equilibrium. And so this occurs when the vapor pressure of the liquid is the same as the vapor pressure or, or just the, the pressure of its environment. So of course, normally this is when the vapor pressure of the liquid is equal to 1 atm. Now another graph is a phase diagram. And this shows what phase a substance will be in at a certain temperature and pressure. So you can see we have the temperature on the x-axis and the pressure on the y-axis. So just as you'd expect, at very high pressures, the solid state will exist, or the liquid, if it's at a higher temperature. And at very low pressures, the gas state will exist. And so there are two special points on this graph. The first is the triple point, which is the only point, the only temperature and pressure at which the substance can coexist in all three phases simultaneously. And next we have the critical point. And so beyond the critical temperature and critical pressure, the substance exists as a kind of fluid, which is not really a liquid or gas. So the phase boundaries kind of break down after this critical point. 